So, thanks to these transit observations, we finally know how far away the Sun is and how big it is. And since the original transit of Venus measurements, much more precise measurements have been made by, for example, bouncing radar signals off Venus or by actually setting space probes around the far side of the Sun. And they've made the answer more precise, but they haven't really changed it. What we've learned is the Sun is 150 million kilometres away, so far away that even at the speed of light it takes over eight minutes to get there. And it has a radius of about 700,000 kilometres, so about 100 times the radius of the Earth. Now both of those are just unbelievably huge numbers, so let's go back to an analogy we've showed you before to make sense of how big these things really are. So let's imagine this Earth that I'm standing on, this enormous great world we all live on, was shrunk down to the size of a soccer ball. So this now is the entire Earth. There's a the North Pole, there's the South Pole, Australia's down here somewhere. Now on this scale, there's the Moon. So that's about the right size of the Moon relative to the Earth. But something's not quite right here, is this? No, there's some nonsense going on. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're the right relative sizes, but they're, they're far too close together. We're going to need to move it way back. So, Brad, you've got a tape measure? Yep. Alrighty. Okay. Are we there? You're going to have to go much further. No. Are we there? Keep going. No. How about now? Uh, a little bit more Ooh. there. Yes. Okay, so this is the Earth-Moon system to scale. The Earth is the right size compared to the Moon, and four metres apart puts them in the correct scale. So that's the Earth and the Moon, but what about the rest of the solar system? On this scale, the Sun would be about the size of this telescope dome. But it certainly wouldn't be that close to the Earth and the Moon. If we have this dome as the Sun, we'd have to put the Earth roughly over here, about a kilometre away. How about the rest of the solar system? Well, Jupiter would be orbiting about here, five kilometres away, near the lake. Saturn twice as far away, Uranus and Neptune out beyond the most distant mountains you can see here. And there's one more thing we can work out. Now we know how far away the Sun is. And that's the energy, the power it puts out. Now, if you're sunbathing here on Earth, it's a clear sunny day, you're picking up about 1,300 watts per square meter of your sunburned body. So that's how much power the sun gives per square meter out here, but we're a long way away. It's also putting out that same amount of power in every direction. So if you imagine a sphere all the way around the Sun, 150 million kilometers out, every square meter of that imaginary sphere is getting about 1,300 watts. So add that all together and you get an absolutely staggering amount of power. I can never remember the number, so I'll look it up for you. It's about 400 million billion billion watts. Which once again is one of those meaninglessly large numbers. But to put it in perspective, it means that one second's worth of the sun's output, the amount of energy it puts out in one second, would be enough to power all the industry and all the people on Earth for four million years. So that concludes our first section. We now know how to find the distance to the sun, and we know how big it is, how far away it is. So basically, it's incredibly large, incredibly far away, and puts out an unbelievable amount of power. And now we're going to try and work out how it does that.